I'm Tom Johnson, Thomas Johnson, Antique Furniture Restoration in Gorm, Maine. This is a nice uh, antique desk. Uh, I believe it's a period piece from the late uh, 18th century. Obviously, it's been refinished. They were never this light originally. This is either birch or maple, and it was probably stained dark. Maybe we'll find traces of the original finish on the underside. It's a nice desk. Uh, Pretty plain inside, but it's got a couple of nice details. This desk has a lot of problems. You can see that the foot is broken, obviously, so we'll get it on its back, check all the feet, repair anything, and it has missing glue blocks. Uh, these uh, dividers between the drawers, these supports are coming loose. But the worst thing is over here. You can see that the whole side of this cabinet is split. I don't know why that occurred. Uh, there's been a lot of repairs to this in the past. Maybe we'll get some clues when we take the drawers out, get it on its back, and have a good look at it. It's interesting, it doesn't look, it doesn't look nearly as bad on the inside as it does on the outside. Uh, luckily, this rail is loose. I think I can bring this out. The uh, drawer runners here look like replacements, and uh, I may need to take them out anyway to shorten them a little bit to push this back into place. That's why it's protruding a bit. I may just replace those. Uh, the drawer runners up here definitely need to be replaced. Uh, these lower ones uh, also look like they've been replaced in the past. I may, you know, replace those again. Start by taking this out, these drawer runners out. Put some clamps on this, see if I can clamp it back into position. It doesn't feel like it even wants to go. It's interesting, I see now looking close up, there's breaks all along here, a very similar break. This whole board was broken and all up in here too. I'm also seeing all kinds of uh, screws here too, going into these rails in four places. that this needs to get pushed back that way also. All right, I think that this clamping arrangement is going to work out fine. Now, I'm going to use epoxy on this glue up. Uh, I do not have a great glue joint. There's a tremendous amount of tension here. It's been repaired times before. I think we need epoxy. I think we need the, the cured strength of the epoxy to help hold this thing in place. Now I've added some more thickener to the epoxy to go into this crack because I don't think it's going to come all the way back together. Now before I tighten these, I'm going to pull the pull it this way. Hmm, I really want to take a peek in here to see if this brought it back all the way. Yeah, it looks uh, level. Maybe I should even add another clamp. Okay, we'll uh, see what we've got tomorrow.
Well, boy, anyway, it certainly went right back where it belongs. I don't even see the crack offhand, but of course I've got to get this uh, excess epoxy off of here. I'll have a look. When I, think I've, I think I've done all I can with the chisel. Now I'm just going to try to uh, scrub this with a little uh, alcohol and a scotch Brite pad. So it looked pretty good when it was uh, wet with the alcohol. I'm going to sand it uh, slightly with some 220 gold and then give it a coat of shellac with the aerosol. I'm just sanding lightly, but my goal is to get rid of these uh, little traces of the epoxy that I see here. They, they're coming right off at this point with the paper. So I've got to turn this up. I've got to get to the inside of the case. Uh, so I think on my way there I'm going to try to turn this up, turn it upside down so I can uh, do the work on the legs. So we knew that this uh, foot was broken off. It was, it's been glued before with some kind of strange white glue. Uh, the other feet, though, seem strong, uh, even though they're all missing their corner blocks. But they've been screwed to the case and screwed to each other in various ways. There's lots of screw holes with plugs throughout this. I'm not going to do anything about that. Everything seems strong. But I will repair this and add the corner blocks. God only knows what this stuff is, but at least it seems to be coming off easily. Here where the glue is on the brake, uh, it doesn't peel off so easily, so I will try a little bit of heat. I don't think it'll take much. So even though that uh, white stuff was seemed to be coming off okay. I finally pulled it all off the crack, but I could see that there was a, some kind of layer of glue or the, the, the wood seemed to be sealed in this miter. And uh, I'm using the heat gun back again to the heat gun to warm that up to get it off. Boy, what is this stuff? It's horrible. Okay, I've got all these surfaces as uh, clean as I can get them, and so I'm going to try to glue all this up. I've cut this board with a slot in it. I'm going to clamp it over here. Gives me something to clamp these pieces to. I'm using hide glue, by the way. Well, it's tough. It's like um, you know, gluing these together, sticking out in the thin air here. Well, I can't uh, possibly fit any more clamps on this leg. It's kind of crazy. And then when I put the the glue block behind it, that will give it a lot of support. But this looks good for now.
I'm uh, fitting my corner blocks in these feet. You know, this piece has a lot of repairs to it done previously. I was determined not to start undoing those repairs uh, because most of them seem secure. This leg, however, I can't even put this block in. Uh, it's so misaligned that I'm going to take the heat gun and take this off and redo it. I'm using hide glue here to do this glue up. You know, these pieces are, you know, together in the back, they're as good as they get. There's still a little bit of a gap there I'll have to fix. But this was a lot easier glue up than the other leg, and it's because I wisely glued the uh, corner block in at the same time. So now I'll go around and glue these other corner blocks in, and uh, that should be it for the feet. All the legs seem really strong.
well, I've got the desk in this position on this side down here where I epoxied that board back together. I'm going to uh, clean that up and get that joint ready to re-glue the rail in. Okay, I just need to do some uh, uh, a little bit of color work and shellacking on the feet. Now I'm going to go ahead with the wax and fill those cracks that on the side that I glued up first. Alright, now I've just got to get some, uh, I've still got a little bit of epoxy on the front of this board here. Alright, we're getting close to uh, being able to glue this rail back in. And I'd forgotten I want to I'm gonna put new drawer runners in for this drawer, so I gotta take this one out. Okay, uh, I'm ready to turn this back on its feet. But I did just remember before I do that, I've got to stain those new blocks I put in there. I got most of the epoxy out of this joint and I, I'd seen this though before. I still got to take a little bit more out of here to get this uh, to fit correctly. Okay, we'll, uh, we'll see tomorrow how the drawers fit. Of course, I gotta install the runners first. Well, it seems good. Uh, there's a little gap here. There was already a little piece of wood missing. You can only bring it together so far here. It's tight there where the dovetail is. Same thing here. I'll fill that in with wax and then touch up this area. Okay, I've cut new drawer runners uh, for this drawer, uh, but I also noticed this rail is pushed out. And uh, it's pretty immediately obvious that the problem is, is that this drawer runner is too long. When the sides shrink, it pushed this rail out. So I need to take this drawer runner out, and I'll do the other one too. They're badly worn, so I'll replace those also 
and cut them shorter so that this rail can get glued back into position. I think you can see how badly it's worn here. I think it'll be a lot easier if I install these drawer runners with this on its back. So um, and today I had a little help to flip it over. Almost forgot I got to uh, I got to glue this rail in before I put the drawer runners in. I can't get this any further out than that because it's because it's tight here. This is a whole board that runs the whole length. It's also tight on the other side, so I'm just going to drip some glue down in there. I had a clamp ready to clamp it this way also, but I don't need it. Okay, to install these, uh, I'm going to put glue only on about two inches or so near the front of the cabinet, and then in the back I'll nail it. And I have some nice old-fashioned uh, cut nails to do that. And in theory, the, that will allow the sides to expand and contract, and this should stay in place. I've still got to install drawer guides for this top drawer because it's narrower and the drawer guides, besides keeping the drawer where it's supposed to be, it's, it's a divider between the lid support and the drawer. Okay, I've got to let these clamps uh, on just for a little while. I'm anxious to try the drawers out. But in the meantime, I'll just uh, finish these touch-ups in this area here. Okay, the, the areas where I've worked, where the repairs were, uh, they're pretty good color, they're a little bit uh, lighter, and so I'm just going to hit it with a very, very light coat of raw umber. Uh, aerosol toner. The drawers are in good shape. Uh, the owner of the desk uh, didn't like these big knobs and they don't look right. Uh, we took one off and you can see here what the original knob was and the size of it. You know I've never seen a slant top desk with knobs on it. These desks typically have either a, a handle, you know, similar like this, back plate with a bail, or it could be this type with a bail. The owner of this desk said that this desk was from 1820. I don't know how she knew that, but I believe it because the knobs on drawers and desks were more that period. So I looked through my books and we, and we know the size, so I was able to find a knob that's from that period, this type of knob. And so we're going to replace the wooden ones with these brass. Okay, I've gone over it with my good old beeswax polish. So there you have it. This is a nice old desk from about 1820. It's a figured birch, it's been refinished. But if you remember, uh, I'm just doing repair work. The, the worst thing about it was this whole side was split. I epoxied that back together. This leg was broken off. I repaired that leg. I redid the repairs on this leg, added blocks, new knobs, new drawer runners, and I cut them shorter, uh, especially this one, so I could push this rail back where it belongs. I think it looks pretty good.